Welcome to Electronic Specify Insights, the podcast for electronics engineers. I'm your host, Paige West. In today's episode, I speak with Robert King, Read Relay Product Manager at Pickering Electronics, to explore the role of Read Relays in space applications. Rob shares his insights into the technical challenges posed by the space environment, how industry trends are influencing relay use, and the types of satellite systems where these components are essential. We also discuss the qualification process for space-ready relays, the demand for custom designs, and the impact of the growing commercial space sector on component requirements. I hope you enjoy this episode. Let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Electronic Specify Insights. I'm pleased today to be joined by Robert King, who is the Read Relay Product Manager at Pickering Electronics. So thanks very much for joining us, Rob. How are you? Are you well? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me uh, on the call today. You're very welcome. So, Rob, why don't you kick us off by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, sure. So I've been with Pickering Electronics for just over 10 years. So I've spent much of that time in our technical support team, which is part of assisting customers with product questions and application advice. Along the way, I've also played a key role in developing many of our new products. Over the last decade in the electronics industry, I've worked across everything from high precision test equipment to space qualified components. I've always found it fascinating designing electronics for extreme environments, and you don't really get much more extreme than space, which has been really nice. So at Peercrim, my role focuses on working closely with engineers, including those in the space sector, understanding their mission requirements uh, and helping specify read relays that will perform reliably from launch all the way through to end of mission. Excellent. And for those of our listeners who perhaps aren't as familiar with the company, can you tell us a little bit about Pickering Electronics as well? Yeah, so sure. Uh, Pickering Electronics are known for leading high-end relay market through innovation, product design, high performance components, and exceptional quality control. So Pickering was established just over 55 years ago to design and manufacture high quality read relays intended primarily for use in instrumentation and test equipment. But we now cover a wide range of applications and multiple industries. So today, Pickering has some of the largest ranges of reread lays on the market. I think we've now got over a thousand different types of product. And, you know, with some of these products being some of the most developed in the read relay industry at this moment. Excellent. Now, I'm very excited for our conversation today. I think the space industry is fascinating and I'm looking forward to, to hearing some of your insights and, and what applications you guys have been working on. But to start off with, what technical considerations would you say make space applications so challenging? Yeah, so space doesn't forgive mistakes. So at first you've got the launch environment, you've got intense vibration and G-forces. Then once you go into orbit uh, or deep space, you're dealing with temperature extremes, which can sometimes swing from minus 150 degrees C to plus 150 degrees C. And you've also got radiation levels far beyond what we see on Earth. And on top of that, power is incredibly limited, you know, especially for missions beyond orbit where sunlight is weaker. So every gram and every milliwatt counts. So the challenge is to design a relay that's small, efficient and robust enough to handle all those conditions while still performing flawlessly for years without any maintenance because you know once it's up there it's up there and there's not much chance of actually working on it again yeah definitely and i'm interested what what trends do you see in the space industry at the minute that are affecting relay use Hmm. yeah so we're seeing a big shift towards the new space sort of area so it's the private companies putting more satellites into orbit for communications Earth observation, and even some looking at doing space tourism in the following years. So, you know, if you take some examples, like you have SpaceX, you know, they're a private launch provider providing, you know, the start 
ship interplanetary system, as well as their star Starlink satellite that they've they've recently introduced. You got the Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos's company focusing on the reusable rockets, and then yes, yeah, so as I said, you've got sort of companies looking at space tourism, so like Virgin Galactic working on their suborbital space tourism uh, with you know space planes and that kind of area. So yeah, a lot of companies working sort of racing to get to these these um, sort of emerging space areas that weren't uh, typically looked at in, in the past. Mm. And and speaking of satellites, maybe you can go into a bit more detail for us. So what kinds of systems in a satellite might use read relays? Yeah, so we've supplied relays, you know, from, for everything from sort of thruster control systems on satellites where you need very precision polarity switching to, you know, drive system on rovers, sort of to low level signal switching for temperature and pressure sensing in planetary landers. A few examples that, you know, that we've worked on in the past, we've also supported space science missions where reliability over decades is essential. So, you know, they, they want to put these, you know, measurement devices orbiting for, you know, extended period of time. So we need the actual sister internal systems to work for, for a long time, many operations, Excellent. Uh, which is, you know, we saw where the relays come in because they're, you know, they're built to withstand extremely long life, you know, hundreds of millions of operations. Sometimes they're built to withstand high voltages. You know, sort of switching up to 12 and a half kV, 20 kV standoff, and they can operate at the extreme temperatures that, that you see in space. So yeah, really good com component to use there. One of our customers has been using our ultra low thermal EMF, the series 100 relays in some pretty amazing applications. So they built a precision photo diode readout circuit, basically ultra sensitive electronics that can measure extremely tiny light signals so they've been using this to switch between different gain settings in their amplifiers without introducing any electrical noise so the challenge is that even a tiny thermal emf which is a small voltage generated when two different metals are at a slightly different temperature this can throw off readings basically so our series 100 relays keep the thermal emf incredibly low so their measurements can stay very accurate. So boards that these relays were used on are flown around space on a cube satellite. So they orbited Earth approximately 3,000 times, and the relays perform flawlessly the whole time. Now they're working on more compact version of this system for out high altitude balloon missions. So they're now looking at a new type of relay, a high density, low thermal EMF product. So we're working on that development at the moment. Mm. And you've, you know, you've mentioned the the considerations and the challenges within space applications. So moving away from from the applications themselves, how do you qualify relays for space use? Yeah, so we start with designs that are inherently robust. So you know, at Pickering, we we use technologies like our soft center encapsulation which is used to cushion the reed switch, you know, inside the relay. So it's, it could potentially be quite a fragile glass tube, but if you put a protection around that, then it's not going to see the stresses from, you know, varying temperatures. We also have internal shielding to reduce electromagnetic, electromagnetic interaction from external signals or signals elsewhere in the system. We've got, you know, we use formless coils for efficiency. So if you have the most efficient coils, you know, you're going to, you're going to use less power overall in the entire system. So this involves winding coils with extremely high coil resistances, reducing like thermal EMFs, uh, which can impact signals across the switch. And yeah, I mean, the, another good point as well is that the re-switch capsules, which contain the switch contacts are hermetically sealed, which is critical because this keeps the relays internal environment very stable and it protects it again, it protects the contacts and mechanisms from contamination, from moisture and outgassing. So it, yeah, so in the vacuum of space without a hermetic seal, uh, materials can 
degrade very quickly or the relay could malfunction due to trapped gases expanding and contracting. Would you say that there's much demand for custom design in, in space applications? Yeah, absolutely. You know, space systems are often one-off or small batch designs and there's rarely a standard requirement. Everything is can be very specific for for each for each use case. So we've built custom relays with top exit connections to simplify high voltage routing. You know, in this case, this eliminates the need for PCB tracks to carry high voltage signals, which is an important consideration for high reliability space applications. You know, we have relays optimized for ultra low thermal MF for scientific measurements and parts of this, you know, parts of the special mounting lead configurations for tight mechanical spaces. So, you know, we offer in some of the highest density read relays on the market, sometimes just four by four millimeter, which will also have, you know, extremely low mass. So, you know, where weight is an extreme important, having highly reliable small devices, you know, is, is critical. I suppose the beauty of our approach is that we base the custom design on an existing product. So we can often supply samples quite quickly as well. You know, we can often supply some of these custom parts in a couple of weeks, which can obviously be very helpful um, if customers have very tight schedules. Mm, yeah, 100%. And, and coming back to some of the trends that you mentioned, you know, you know, travel tourism and, and space tourism and, and things like that. How is this rise in, in new space or commercial space affecting component demand as you see it? Yeah, I think we see developments in these areas move in very quickly. So sort of the commercial space companies yeah, move very fast. They want high performance components that can be produced reliably and sometimes in sometimes in larger volumes. So that means we're getting you know, we're getting more requests for high density relays that can save PCB space, high voltage designs that can still meet mass constraints and cost effective solutions. Obviously, if they don't compromise the reliability at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's pushing everyone it's sort of in the supply chain, supply chain to innovate faster. Mm -hmm. Are there any common misconceptions about using read relays in space? Yeah, I mean... One is that, you know, read relays are quite an old technology. Obviously, you know, we've been developing relays for 55 years and, you know, some people may say, you know, oh, they're still around. Why are you using read relays over other technologies? And it's because that, you know, it's because simply when you've got a mechanical switch, there isn't anything better for isolation. You know, you've got a physical disconnect in the circuit. So it has benefits over other technologies like solid state. For instance, where, you, you know, semiconductor devices have, you know, leakage to some degree across, across the contact. So there's always going to be a need for a read relay where you need extremely high isolation, you know, low, low contact, extremely fast operate times. So these are a couple, a couple of the points. I suppose another misconception is that read relays are deemed to be mechanically fragile, but in fact, they're actually incredibly robust because they have no pivot points or armatures like uh, electromechanical relays, for instance. Another is that they can't handle high voltages, but we offer very small high voltage vacuum switches, you know, sometimes 20, 20 millimeters that can stand off voltages of 5 kV. So you can offer very, very small devices with extremely high voltages. So there's a couple of, couple of the sort of misconceptions I can think of. Do you see any situations where perhaps read relays wouldn't be the best choice? If you need very high switching speeds in the nanosecond range, perhaps, or, um, or for RF, or if the switching frequency is extremely high and continuous, a read relay might not be optimal. Although we do make coaxial relays that work up to five gigahertz, read relays do hit a limitation sort of in in some of the RF ranges. Also, if you have a, a purely solid state architecture with no moving contacts at all, then a relay might not fit into that kind of design philosophy. But for most power signal and high voltage switching needs, read relays are very, very good. 
Excellent. I'm interested to hear, given all you've told us so far, what is it that you enjoy about working with space industry customers? Yeah, I think space engineers think in terms of like mission life, not just sort of the, the product life. So, so there's a real sense of purpose of what, what these customers are doing. So your component might be part of a, a spacecraft that's, you know, in the future might be going to Mars or studying outer planets, which is, I think, an extremely interesting area for, for everybody right now, you know, just how far sort of humanity can go with these things and, mm-hmm. you know, developing a component in one of these systems is, you know, is really enjoyable for us. You have to solve interesting challenges together, things you've never encountered in designs before, because, you know, we're doing something as part of the whole system It's doing something that maybe it hasn't ever done before. So it's sort of a collaborative problem solving task, which, which, you know, we find very rewarding. Mm, Yeah, I can understand that. Is there any particular advice you'd like to give to an engineer who's perhaps designing their first space system? I mean, what we would say is, you know, if, if the mission sort of the length of time is critical in sort of time respects, then uh, getting your component suppliers involved early is, is really important. You know, space projects have so many constraints sometimes, you know, mass, power, thermal, mechanical. So, you know, involving component suppliers early can stop any sort of redesign work later on. You know, we can start working, testing to the extremes that required. So, you know, hitting the very highest levels, not just, you know, average specifications, working to the very limits. And yeah, so I I think if you don't, you know, get that design part right to start with, it could end up being a very expensive project in the long run. So it's, it's worth contacting, you know, a component manufacturer, getting all of the reliability data and specifications sort of tied up. Mm. So where can our listeners go then to find out more about your products or, or perhaps get in touch with you? Yeah, so you, uh, you can visit our website, which is uh, www.pickerandrelay.com. There's a dedicated section for read relays for space applications, along with our full full catalogue and space application guide. You can also email us at techsales at pickerandrelay.com. And our technical sales team will be happy to talk you through your requirements or send samples. We we'll also offer a free sample service on any of our products. So yeah, please get in touch if you have any inquiries. Perfect. I'll certainly encourage our listeners to do that. And before we wrap up then, Rob, is there anything else that you'd like to discuss? I think, yeah, just that space is one of the most sort of exciting and challenging environments for electronic design, especially one of the most challenging you know, that we see our component level and it's an area where the right relay choice can make a huge difference to mission success. So yeah, we just love to be part of that journey. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's an industry that's only continuing to grow. So I look forward to to seeing where it takes you guys, but thank you very much for, for joining me as a guest. It's been a pleasure having you and thank you very much for your insight. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this latest episode of Electronic Specifier Insights. Don't forget to subscribe to the series to keep up to date with our newest guests and do share with fellow colleagues, friends and family who may be interested in the latest news from the electronics industry.